important uh, because this class is, as all of our um, honors lecture series and so many of our honors courses are, it is an EXL class, it is an MT Engage class, and it is a civic learning class. And because our topic overall is mental health, uh, we will be tying the mental health topic to so many issues in life that are relevant to us on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but civic health is a part of our mental health, and the American Medical Association says that human beings' ability to vote is critical to their mental and physical well-being. And so we're trying to integrate all of the capacities that are um, helpful to us this semester. We're going to practice those. And um, being a part of community, being engaged, um, being dedicated to our work here in this course, all of those are practices that contribute to good mental health. So in terms of the being prepared to vote, we're actually going to take a day in this class and we're going to go vote together. So you can't vote unless you are actually registered to vote. And here's a trick which I'm sure 99.9% .9 of you know, but I'm going to review it. Um, in Tennessee, we vote biblically. It's just like the Old and New Testament. We go uh, vote where <laughs> where we where we are registered. And for those of us who want to vote right here and we want to go together as a class and vote in Rutherford County, you need to be registered in Rutherford County. You can't be registered in Wilson County and participate in this exercise. You can't be registered in Shelby County and participate in this exercise. Um, we'll all go together, but um, being able to vote means that you need to be registered in Rutherford County in order to pull that off. Now, having said that, I'm not necessarily advocating that you be registered in Rutherford County. Uh, I am advocating that you be registered in Rutherford County if you live here. And by that I mean if you spend the nights here Monday through Friday, if you put your shoes under the bed here Monday through Friday. If you're a commuter student and you drive back every day to Bedford County, then by all means you need to be registered in Shelbyville or wherever that is. Uh, you need to um, be registered in Davidson County. Uh, if you live in Nashville and you commute back there on a regular basis, or if you live in Antioch, that's Davidson County, you need to be registered there. But for those of you who actually live right here, um, the practical thing is to get registered right in Rutherford County. So I'm asking you, please, as you go through this piece of paper and fill out the information, that no matter what you think your status is, is that you take the time right now to check yourself. And there is an opportunity for you to check yourself on the form. It gives you what to type in. But you can also go to that particular um, QR code and check yourself there um, so that you can know exactly where you are registered so you can make a plan. Now, why am I advocating that you get registered and vote in the presidential preference primary? Honest to Pete, I'll be fully disclosing and very honest. I don't give much of a flip about the presidential preference primary. Uh, but I'm going to go vote in it just because it's our active duty as citizens of this country to participate in all elections. And the reason why I'm recommending that you do, even though you may not have much of a choice, although actually I think Dean Pyle can attest on most of these lists, when you see the actual ballot, you'll be surprised how many names are on there. Probably your Uncle Fred's name is on there. The list of candidates is always much longer than you can imagine, uh, even though we only hear about you know the top one or two candidates that win each party. Um, but the reason why I'm suggesting that you should participate in that this winter is because it's practice for next year. And we happen to know that so many folks are first-time voters, and they've never been inside a voting booth, they don't know how a voting machine works, and there's a lot of anxiety associated with it. That may sound silly if you're not one of those people and you don't suffer from voting anxiety, but we know from a lot of studies that a lot of folks do, and therefore uh, one way to help alleviate that is just to engage in it. And this one is a pretty uh, not heavily significant one, if I may interject my thought on that. Um, and you can go practice with the machinery, and if you goof up, it's probably not life or death. So, um, meanwhile, it will establish a voting record for you, and then you can be all prepared to vote in the elections that follow. There are actually a few uh, local municipal initiatives um, on the March 5th ballot in um, Rutherford County, and I need to find out what those are, and I'll try to tell you next week because we will be going together as a class before too long to vote, so you need to have that information. I'd like you to check yourself, know exactly where you're registered, and if you're not, make a point to get registered, and I can help you with that if you would like to see me after class. I have voter registration forms 
right here with me for you to fill out. And I can help you so that everybody in our whole class can be 100% prepared and ready to be engaged in, in the election that's upcoming. Civic Health is, of course, just one piece of what we're talking about this semester. But we're looking at mental health from the perspective of the good life and what it takes in life to be happy and whole and well uh, and engaged fully in a positive way in the life around us. There are a lot of stressors that challenge human beings and challenge college students into feeling not so well more often than we'd like to admit. So we're going to try to um, look at the challenges of your life from multiple perspectives. And um, coming up next week, we're going to start the series with Dr. Michelle Stevens, who is the head of our um, the Cultural Diversity Center that's over at the College of Education. And she's speaking about cultural humility and mental health. Um, right after her visit, the director of our MTSU Counseling Services, who is Dr. Mary Kane Anderson, will be speaking about what's really going on at MTSU and processes that you can engage in, uh, facil facilities and programs that you can be taking a part of um, that will help your sense of well-being. And she wants to make, be sure that everybody um, knows what those components are and where to get access to them. And she's the head of the food chain for that here at MTSU. So it would be good for you to meet her personally. And you'll have a contact and a direct person with whom you can speak about it. Um, Dr. Rudy Dunlap, who's part of our HHP program, Health and Human Performance, um, really has two lectures he'd like to present. But sadly, we have had to um, amalgamate him down to simply one. Uh, he is basically going to be talking about outdoor experiences and getting back to nature because that's very important to him. He leads a lot of our outdoor programming here at MTSU. And in addition to which, he's a professor of physical health, so he's going to be talking about bodily exercise and those aspects of the physical being that impact our, our mental well-being. Um, on the Monday the 19th, we are going to meet together. People will not come here, but we're actually going to meet on the streets of uh, Rutherford County, downtown Murfreesboro, on the square. Um, and those of us who are not registered in Rutherford County are going to be a cheering squad for those who are registered, and we're going to have a party out there. And we're hoping to get the um, National Boat Early Program to deliver us pizza uh, on the sidewalk, which they have done in the past, but I'm, I'm pushing for that. We'll see what, if we can make that happen. Um, Later that very week, because the University Honors College is a co-sponsor of this event, um, you are being invited to participate in the Tennessee Statewide College Campus Civic Summit that's being hosted by MTSU this year, and that is going to be all day on Friday the 23rd of February at the Miller Center. Um, I have given you the registration link, you need to look at your schedules, if you can make changes, um, to your schedule, to your work schedule. If you can plan ahead for that, to be a part of that, I'd like you to consider doing so. Um, I am in a position to write a letter of excuse to other classes that you might have to miss for this all-day engagement, to be a part of um, the Statewide Civic Summit that only happens once a year. It was held at Vanderbilt last year. We took a large team from MTSU there, but MTSU is proud to be the host campus for it this year. And um, our Honors College is sponsoring this event through the American Democracy Project, and we're um, hoping that each of you will agree to participate in that because it will be looking toward our long-term national health as we move into um, the latter months of 2024. Following that, on February 26th, um, Dr. Seth Marshall, who's with the Department of Psychology, um, will be speaking to us on meaning and purpose, cultivating good mental health from a psychological perspective. And when we get back from spring break, Professor Sarah Harris, who is with Nutrition and Food Sciences in the Human Sciences Department, is going to be talking about food and eating and its correlation to good mental health. Um, later in mid-March, Professor Kent Seiler, many of you in poli-sci have had courses with him and know him. He appears on the... Um, 
NBC uh, Channel 4 News as a political commentator on occasion. He's really going to be talking about the bad mental health that has ensued from political divisiveness too often in this country and why that is pursued and what we need to be doing as human beings and as citizens to help mitigate that and keep it from impacting ourselves. And we wanted to have a faith and religion piece uh, of that um, to contribute to our general overall interdisciplinary discussion. So we're tickle pink and really honored that Reverend Susan Jones, who is a Methodist minister, and she is the wife of the brand new president of Belmont University, is coming to MTSU to talk about the program that she leads at Belmont, which is called What's Your Why? And it's about faith, um, health, and purpose. So purpose is a term that <laughs> recurs a great deal in these um, discussions on, on mental health. Um, Further on the civic health issue and the fact that mental health is a very much a political issue and mental health seems to be the bugaboo in our state for everything that can go wrong and what we want to blame bad occurrences on. So if we believe that, that the state of our, our state's health requires attention and direction, what is the Tennessee General Assembly doing to mitigate and address mental health problems across our state? Mr. Bill Dobbins is the Government Relations Coordinator for the National Alliance on Mental Health for the State of Tennessee. And he is essentially um, the chief mental health, pro-mental health lobbyist for all the collective mental health associations and organizations in the state of Tennessee. And he works on the legislature to help legislation wend its way through our Tennessee General Assembly. So uh, by the 1st of April, this convening General Assembly will have reemerged from ICE lockdown and will be about its business uh, making laws for our state and it will be interesting and we'll all learn a lot from Mr. Dobbins about um, what types of issues are being addressed. We know that after the Covenant school shooting uh, a year ago, um, the governor called a special session of our legislature at the end of the summer, at the first of the fall. Very little was passed and very little was passed on mental health, but will they be will our legislators be addressing that further. Um, after that discussion, Dr. Phil Oliver, who is a philosopher, is with our Department of Philosophy and Religious Studies, will once again be sort of talking about the flourishing lives, healthy minds topic of mental health, the philosophical approach from the ancients, and how mental health was looked at historically over time, and what, what causes us to be happy, what helps us to facilitate our being happy. And After he speaks, we're going to have three honor students who are doing theses on mental health issues present to us. Um, we have quite a number of our honor students who are pursuing mental health from a, from a social work perspective, some in the psychology department, some from religi religious studies and in other directions. So we're going to have a little potpourri of uh, MTSU honor students who are going to talk on this very subject from their undergraduate honors research. And then we're going to end the semester with Dr. Tom Brindop, who's here. He's, we're starting the semester with him, too. He's back in our uh, northeast corner right now, and he will be on this podium presenting um, the last lecture for the series on finding the good life wherever you are as you uh, leave for the summer and seek your own pathways to um, excellent mental health. So those are the types of topics we're going to be looking at. And to be perfectly honest, because by definition, the Honors Lecture Series is interdisciplinary, it's multidisciplinary, it's meant to be able to touch on as many colleges and departments as possible, and we have really only grazed the surface. Um, as we were thinking about this and the number of weeks available for what we could talk about and should talk about, we can squeeze it all in. So there's so many more that are ideas and issues that we need to be discussing, and what we want to do is kind of build a framework of resources so that you can have more at your fingertips to call on than we are able to provide right here. And I've already started that to some extent. I don't know if any of you or many of you this week have been on our D2L page yet, but I opened it up um, before the ice storm and started um, inserting a few pieces. One thing I really wanted to link is 
a radio show on WPLN, which is our um, public national public radio, national public radio, WPLN, but it's a also exists as everything does now as a podcast, so you can really access it um, from your computer, from your phone. It's called No Small Endeavor. Has any of you ever heard of the uh, no, no Small Endeavor podcast or the radio show? One person? Well, all of you need to be, two people, uh, you need to be introduced to it. And I have linked it on D2L um, with a note that it appears on WPLN Radio on Sunday afternoons at 2 o'clock. So if you're a radio listener or if you're, you know, have your phone on and want to be listening to something while you're studying, um, it's a really wonderful thing to pick up. It's great to wash dishes too. I can tell you I do that on a fair number of occasions. But in terms of just ad, uh, access to all of the podcasts, um, I've given you the link to that as well. And any of them that you can take the time to listen to will be beneficial to you. I'm 100% I'm positive about that. Um, I learn something every single time I uh, connect to it. The man who puts this program together, his name is Dr. Lee Camp. He is a professor of theology at David Lipscomb University. And um, he has a very broad world view on what leading the good life uh, is all about. And um, I think we're all seeking inspiration and resources to help us make it through the day. And, and that's a really, a really healthy one. Um, Other resources that I have up there include um, kind of the link to the American Medical Association uh, information on, on civic health uh, as pertaining to good mental health and the ability to vote as a social determinant of mental health. So I thought you might like to take a look at the actual AMA awarding on that, just not coming out of my mouth, but looking at it all together. And then I'm going to give you a few little introductory pieces of wisdom from my own um, briefcase of goodies from which I pull some ideas, but I want to share before we do that, that we're doing this whole series, as I say, connecting with the MTSU frameworks of engagement and experience and, and civic thought so that we can expand in lots of different directions as we're looking to wholeness for ourselves. and. Part of the requirements to do that within our MTSU structure is that we must do, we must choose to engage in beyond the classroom activities. So we have baked some of the beyond the classroom activities into the actual um, structure of the class. Um, we are going to go vote together on February 19th. Uh, you were invited to participate in the Tennessee Campus Civic Summit on the 23rd of February. And again, under BTCs, I have three file folders in our D2L already. D BTCs is beyond the classroom activities. Um, I have a link there for registration for the Campus Civic Summit. Um, I have several other things that you can sign up for that are already there, and I've noted in your syllabus that things are happening all across this campus all the time, and you need to have your antennae up and your ears peaked so that you will pick up on what those are, but when I hear about them, or when you hear about them, let me know. I'll announce them to the class when we do housekeeping at the beginning of each one of these, but we do know for a fact that during the month of February, there's so much going on because it's African American History Month, um, during the month of March. It is Women's History Month. Activities associated with this are profuse. They're just everywhere. You, not availing oneself of these opportunities would be so wrong. Um, so this is a chance to do that in the connection with this class. And then um, in April, um, it's Asian Pacific Islander Month, so it's sort of a, a focus on Asian culture here at the university, and there are opportunities for that as well. And Honors College, of course, has many opportunities throughout the year that pop up 
And those are easy because they're often right here within this building or going with a group of our fellow honor students to activities outside the building. On this piece of paper, that when you look at the titles of what people are supposed to talk about, my title is the longest one in the whole series. Everything in there but the kitchen sink. I wanted to talk about the green bean theory. I wanted to talk about, talk about pleased to be of service. I wanted to talk about civic health and mental health. And really how I umbrella those and integrate them is about community, which is what we need to be building, and also about doing good work, which is a value of human beings. It's certainly a value of the Honors College. We are all here together because you are the types of students who do <laughs> good work, and you revel in that. It gives you meaning and purpose to be um, seeking excellence in your academic work. Um, but seeking excellence in all that we do is part of my value system and I believe that the service that we do for others is service that we essentially do for ourselves because in building community we are strengthening our own hearts and our own sense of purpose. Um, just yesterday as a complete fluke I was listening to a Tennessee poet whom I value a great deal. I don't know if you've heard um, the poet Bill Brown do a reading. He taught at Vanderbilt for a number of years. He actually taught English um, and creative writing at Hume Fogg High School in, in Davidson County for quite a number of years. And I understand he just passed away. He's um, a local native Tennessee person with deep roots in the state of Tennessee, and he writes in um, the vernacular, a dialect, if you will, of sort of rural Tennessee. And um, there's hardly any poem of his that I don't just love, and I love it when he reads it. Um, some of the things are available through um, PBS on Arts Break, um, and others are just available in published works and compendia uh, and collections online. Um, but I got in touch today with the Rutherford County Poet Laureate and asked who will be teaching a class here starting tomorrow in the Honors College, as a matter of fact. And I asked her if she knew this particular poem called My Grandmother's Language. And she did indeed and found it for me and sent me the wording today. And I'm not going to read the whole poem because, although it's pretty funny and, you know, it sets up kind of the tone of it. For instance, the first paragraph is In my grandmother's language, there was no word for sex. Cows were playful in season, and there were too many bucks on the road. Well, quail paired off this spring. She's as ripe as a plum. And don't do nothing foolish, um, meaning those were the ways in which his grandmother used that vocabulary. And he goes on to talk about other words and language that his grandmother used. It's sort of old time, and if you have grandparents in Tennessee, maybe you've heard of some of these. Um, and he, he explains them all. It's a great poem. Um, but he ends the poem with this concept. So it's just this last paragraph that caught my eye and I wanted to share with you. In my grandmother's language, there was no word for handout. But people practiced common decency. Neighbors were welcome to share a table, no matter how sparse the larder. Guests ate first. And during hard luck, Community stock shared community feed. The words help and hope were the same. Can I help you? Grandmother always asked of friends and strangers alike. I don't know if in the neck of the woods that you grew up you heard that phraseology, but I did in my childhood because I'm a number of decades older than you. But I, in Tennessee people used to say, can I help you? And I love the connection. Um, that Mr. Brown made between help and hope um, because I think in my um, role as professor of history here at this university and as also director of the American Democracy Project, I want to share and convey with students 
that we are collectively together building the beloved community. And that's part of our role as students at the Honors College. It's part of our role as citizens in the United States of America and citizens of the world. And it's our role as human beings to build um, a hopeful and healthy he source of health for ourselves that's built on the relationships we build with others in sharing and being the best positive community that we can. Another phrase that caught my attention comes from late night TV. Um, I was up listening to Stephen Colbert at some point over Christmas break, and he was talking about when life gets rough and things go bad, and uh, he was being interviewed by Anderson Cooper um, right before Christmas, and Anderson Cooper was saying, can you say that you honestly love all the bad things that happen to you? And Colbert said, to love the thing that I most wish had not happened, what punishments from God are not gifts, actually? It's a gift to exist. It's a gift to exist, he repeated. Life is a gift. And with existence comes suffering, and there's no escaping that. If you're grateful for your life, then you have to be grateful for all of it. You can't pick and choose what you're grateful for. So what do you get from loss? Well, he said, you get awareness of other people's loss, which allows you to connect to that other person and allows you to love more deeply and understand what it's like to be a human being. And it's true that all human beings suffer, and it's our job to feel the pain of those around us. And through that we grow, and through that we accept what junk comes our way. And when we're having the negative downtimes, um, if we understand that life is not meant to be just a bed of roses all the time, um, we work through it. I put in my phraseology of the green bean theory. Green bean theory is another piece of my own past and my own history. I grew up in the era when if something lousy happened to you, or if you hit a bump in the road, or you had problems, you just best get to work. Simple as that. My mother would always, when we would be weeping for no matter what reason, bring out a big pan of green beans and say, string those. And you said, yes, ma'am, and answered the call, no matter what it was. And I can remember sitting in my yard, <laughs> popping green beans and we're weeping and knifing them up and stringing them and by the time I got to the bottom of that pan of green beans I felt enormously better <laughs> and in my family we always referred to this as the green bean theory which is basically get to work do something now doing something for others is bigger than that I was merely stringing beans that were going to go on the dinner table but I was contributing to my family I suppose as well or perhaps she was canning and putting up but I advocate that that idea of um, what we always heard the phrase of idle hands or the devil's workshop, um, that notion of basically keeping busy, but doing it the best we can, do excellent work, uh, excel at what we do, give it everything that we can possibly give, and we're pleased to be of service because it's not only going to contribute to our community, but it's going to contribute to our own sense of well-being. And that's another reason why we vote and why the AMA says the right to vote and participating in voting creates good mental health because we're doing something to try to make things better. We're creating the community in which we want to live. Another quote I wanted to read to you is a little bit of a piece together, and I don't know if perhaps you've heard this, it's um, piecing together a couple different phrases by George Bernard Shaw. I know, I read both Pygmalion and St. Joan plays when I was in high school. George Bernard Shaw is considered like, he's Irish, but he was the, maybe the second most famous playwright out of Great Britain after Shakespeare. Uh, did you all read Pygmalion and uh, St. Joan when you were in high school? No, didn't think so. Uh, <laughs> I, I, have, I, I know Man and Superman, which was, was written in 1903, but I haven't read it myself. But this is a quote from George Bernard Shaw piecing together both um, a dedication page in Man and Superman and also um, a little piece from one of his speeches. 
He said, this is the true joy in life, being used for a purpose, recognized by yourself as a mighty one. The being a force of nature, instead of a feverish, selfish little clot of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion <coughs> that my life belongs to the whole community. And as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. For the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It's a sort of splendid torch, which have got, I have got hold of for a moment, and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to the future generations. I'm at the stage in my life when I'm soon handing off to the future generations, and you're it. You're the ones looking out for the well-being of the world around us, and I count on you so importantly to be the source of such good and power. And I know that we here at MTSU, uh, here in this Honors College, are a platform for growing and creating the kind of energy that we need to make the world a better place, make your lives stronger, make your communities better, make your families more potent and healthy. And no matter what struggles and pains we each come out of, and we all come out from some, because that's the very nature of the human existence, it's a role that we have to try to heal ourselves so that we can emanate out the energy to heal others. And if, in the course of this semester, we can explore some of those ideas together and participate in a bit of that healing energy ourselves, then that will be a worthwhile endeavor. So we're going to look at it from multiple perspectives, and I invite you to come to me with ideas you have that we can post on D2L so others can be energized to explore beyond this course because seeking the good life and creating a better society and a better community for ourselves and our families, that's an ongoing purpose that we will live all of our, all of our days. Um, and our need to be replenished and re-energized in, in that work never ends. So I invite you to be a part of um, helping build that together. And come to class, be here every day, Check in every Monday, um, engage, see me. My office is upstairs on the second floor. I'm always here, the door's always open. Um, if you don't find the door open, shoot me an email and I'll set a time to meet up with you. Um, I wanna get to know you this semester. Some of you have had other classes, so I'm glad to see you again. Welcome back, hope you had a good restful Christmas break and let's do spring together. Thank you.